Vicky is having a reality show audition today. Action. But first, she needs to fix her car quickly to get there. Three mechanics offer their help, but two of them are fake. Can you spot who exactly? The first person is wearing an expensive watch. It's too risky to wear them while working. And the third person's nails are way too long for this job, mm. so Vicky should choose the second guy. Hello. Vicky has just had an amazing audition. Yeah. The manager says, and finally, one last question. Can you spot the exact center of this table? How should Vicky answer this question? Oh. Vicky should put her finger confidently at the supposed center of the table and say, this is the center point. Afterwards, the manager may ask, hmm. how do you know if this is the exact center? In this case, Vicky can reply, your last question was the previous one so I don't have to answer further. <laughs> the manager just wanted to check how attentive Vicky is. The reality show takes place on an island. Vicky gets her first task. She needs to find a village with other contestants using this map. Vicky has to enter the maze at the left bottom and leave it through the exit point. There are two rules. She can go through one circle more than once, and she can move only by exchanging green and yellow circles. Can you help Vicky out? Here's the right way out. Vicky breaks through the maze and finds herself in a creepy room. The door behind her slams shut. To move on to the next level of the game, Vicky has to unlock this door. Can you help her crack this seven digit code? There's an inscription on the door which says, the seven C's. Vicky should try to think literally and enter seven C's. Vicky opens the door and continues her journey. There are three ways to reach the village, oh. but each path is hiding some danger. There's a creepy mummy hiding in the forest on the first path. The second path leads through a castle of a spooky vampire. And there's a hungry zombie waiting on the third road. Can you help Vicky choose the safest option? She should take the second path. The sun is shining, which means the vampire is sleeping. Finally, Vicky reaches the village, and here's her next task. Vicky and Nikki must hang on this beam for five minutes. Huh? Vicky has a fire under her legs, while Nikki has metal spikes that are moving randomly underneath him. Can you predict who's more likely to win? Vicky, take a closer look at the fire. There's a kerosene barrel under her feet, so the fire will go out in 20 seconds. To find treasures, Vicky has to unlock the final door. She needs to push one of these four buttons, but she only has one chance. What would you suggest? Vicky has to choose the red button. The symbols on the door are hints. Each of the four products can be red colored. After all the adventures, Vicky is finally having lunch. Can you spot anything odd here? Hello! Vicky gets a bed in a dormitory room. She will share it with four other contestants. Vicky drops her backpack on the bed and goes to the toilet. In a few minutes, she returns and finds out that someone had stolen her phone. Vicky questions all her roommates. Sam says, I had a meeting in the lobby. My friend can confirm that. Fiona says, I was washing my hair in the shower, so I didn't see or hear anything. Diana says, I spent the last 20 minutes at the laundromat. I came back just now. And Mia says, sorry, I was doing exercises on the balcony, so I didn't watch your stuff. Who's lying? Fiona. She said she had just washed her hair, but her curls are dry. Uh -oh. The Greens housemaid Stacy forgets to close the window at night. In the morning, she finds out that some valuables had been stolen. Stacy calls the police. The detective checks the crime scene and puts together a list of all stolen items. Take a look at the picture. Can you tell what was stolen? The 
candlestick, music box, and vase. The detective interviews the Green's neighbors. He asks, did you see anything suspicious last night? Maya replies, yes, I saw a man in a black hat. Hmm. Peter says, I saw a suspicious woman with a big box by the Green's house. Hmm. Liam says, I saw someone dressed as a dragon and another guy with a hiking backpack. And Will says, I saw a strange masked man near the house 20 minutes after the Greens went to bed. Hmm. Who seems suspicious? Will, how did he know when the family went to bed? Bob's parents are going on vacation for two weeks and leave him alone. Yeah. His father says, Bobby, be very careful. No parties at home. But Bob throws parties almost every night. One night, his friends notice a car and yell, Looks like your dad's car is here, bro! Oh, no. All the guests clean up the mess as quickly as they can and hide. Parents arrive early and realize that Bob had a party. Ugh. How? There are four joysticks and a pizza slice under the sofa. Spelled forwards, it's what you do every day. Spelled backwards, it's something you hate. Can you guess this word? The correct answer is live. This is Mary. All her hats are white except two. Also, all her hats are red except two. And all her hats are black except two. How many hats does Mary have? Just three, one of each color. Kate enters the local supermarket to get some fruits. There's an intelligent glass pane installed in the fridge. This glass pane allows cherries and apples to pass through. At the same time, it keeps grapes and melons inside. Can you figure out which rule the glass pane is following? The glass pane only allows the fruits with double letters in their names to pass through. Can you spot anything odd in this picture? Too cool for winter. Kelly visits her bestie, Sarah, but Sarah is crying. <laughs> Kelly asks, what happened? Huh? Sarah doesn't say anything. She just shows Kelly a phone chat with her boyfriend. Can you tell what made Sarah so upset? He lied to Sarah about his dog's illness to hang out elsewhere. Take a look at the reflection in his sunglasses. Seems like he's chilling at the beach. Billy enters a dining room. Right away, he spots that someone had prepared a prank. What about you? Oh. This chair only has three legs. Lily gets a job as a flight attendant. This is her first flight from Hawaii to Mexico City. She's greeting the guests in the aircraft, but three passengers on the flight are not humans. Can you spot who? Uh -huh. This lady doesn't cast a shadow. Therefore, she's not a real human. And this one is dressed up too warmly for the hot weather. The guy over here is drinking a weird green liquid with bugs, which is kind of cringy for real human beings. Jill is walking in the park. Suddenly, a street dealer in a mask offers her an original golden watch for $20. Jill agrees, pays, and puts it on right away. Oh, yes. Soon, three people approach Jill to claim the watch. Mike says, this watch has belonged to my family for ages. I lost it near the ice cream van. Sheila says, someone stole my golden watch today. I was sitting on a ladder and fell asleep for a while. When I woke up, the watch was gone. Stefan says, I also lost my watch today. I think I dropped it on the third floor of this coffee shop. Can you help Jill return the watch to its actual owner? Hmm. The coffee shop doesn't have the third floor, and Mike's hand tattoo is identical to the dealer's, so it's the same person. Oh. So the watch belongs to Sheila. One night, Bill and Jonah performed their hit song at the Kingdom's Festival. The crowds loved it, but the song offended the king. 
the king told the musicians that he would not leave it unpunished. A few hours before their punishment, they were approached by the kingdom's princess, who happened to be a big fan of their music. She gave them a pair of magic six-sided dice that could land any way they wished. Soon after she left, a trap door opened below Bill and Jonah's feet and they fell into a deep cavern. In the cavern, a robed figure appeared before them. It turned out to be a powerful genie. The genie told them he could change the king's decision, but only if Bill and Jonah proved worthy of it by completing a couple of challenges. The men were relieved and agreed to play along. Then the genie disappeared behind a wall and three buttons appeared. There was a red button, a yellow one, and a green. Somewhere on the floor, they found a note that read, SSERP HETDRE UTBTNO. Bill and Jonah clicked on one of the buttons and managed to open a hidden door on the wall. Which button did they choose? The red button. They unscrambled the words on the note and discovered it read, press the red button. In the next room, the genie was waiting for them. He told Bill and Jonah that the next challenge was a game he loved very much, a life-size version of Snakes and Ladders. He told them that the cavern they were in had 100 rooms, all connected by passageways as well, as you guessed it, Snakes and Ladders. The rules remain the same as in the original game, with only two exceptions. Both Bill and Jonah had to make their way out of the cavern, reaching the exit in a maximum of five turns. However, once either Bill or Jonah used a snake or a ladder, it would disappear and become inaccessible to the other person. It was very difficult, but both guys managed to find their way out of the cavern. Can you figure out how they did it? Here's how it worked out. The team had the magic dice the princess gave them, so they could choose the number they needed to reach either a ladder or a snake. But to reach the exit in five or fewer turns, they needed to use both snakes and ladders in their strategy. Bill went first and chose to walk four rooms. There, he got the ladder up to room 75. Then he diced his way to room 76 and slid down a snake all the way to room 41. Then after another dice roll, he got to room 47. He slid back down to room 30. On his fourth roll, he walked to room 35 and got a ladder up to room 96. He rolled his final dice to room 100 and got out of the cavern. On Jonah's turn, he had to take a different route, as the snakes and ladders Bill used had disappeared. So firstly, he rolled room 5 and got a ladder up to room 15. Then he got a ladder from room 19 to room 41. From there, he rolled his way up to room 53 and got a ladder up to room 94. And finally, rolled his magic dice all the way to room 100 and towards freedom. In another kingdom nearby, Natalie was the princess and heir to the throne. One day, during her morning walk, Natalie got lost. She found a house in the forest and went to knock on the door and ask for help. The house was owned by an evil witch that captured Natalie. The witch said this was her chance to win the throne and planned on disappearing with Natalie. So she put the princess in a dark, damp cavern. The witch had forgotten, but inside the cavern, there were three doors. Natalie could use one of the doors to escape, but behind the first door, there was a fire-breathing dragon. Behind the second door, there were venomous rats. And behind the last door, there was a dark forest. Which door should she choose? The third door, of course. It will lead her straight back to the forest. Outside again, Natalie still didn't know which way to take to get back to the castle. That's when she remembered that her necklace had a magic pendant on it. The king's magician gave it to her, saying it would always help her find her way home. She used the pendant, and three magical animals appeared. The first magical animal was a tiger, the second was an octopus, and the third animal was a butterfly. Only one of them knew the way back to the castle. But if she chose to follow the wrong animal, she would find herself even further away from the castle. Which magical animal should she follow?
Did you notice the kingdom banner in the throne room? It had tigers on it. It's the official symbol of Natalie's kingdom, which means she would be best off by following the tiger. Alice was at a crowded concert. Suddenly, she felt somebody reaching into her bag and pulling out her wallet that only had credit cards inside. She couldn't see who the person was, but after checking the footage from the surveillance cameras, security guards were able to narrow it down to three suspects. Johnny said he was waiting in line to use the toilet for hours and didn't have anything to do with the theft. Jenny said she was super rich and didn't need anyone else's cards to pay for the things she wanted. Penny said she was too focused on singing along with the band to notice what had happened. The security guards immediately figured out who the thief was. Can you figure it out too? Well, nobody told Jenny that the wallet only had credit cards, but somehow she still knew it. Jenny must have stolen it. Two friends are sitting at the same table in a cafe. One of them is speaking about a TV show he began to produce, getting into all the details of the production. The second friend is talking about the birthday party he is about to throw next week, saying there's going to be a lot of cool people and delicious food. The other people at the cafe are annoyed by the men's loud voices. But why is this dialogue so strange? Why is one of the guys talking about a TV show and the other about a party? Well, these two guys aren't speaking to each other. They're talking on their phones, through headphones. Lucy found a new job in another city, so she had to move. She contacted a real estate agent to help her find her new house. He showed her three options. The first one was a beautiful studio with a view of the park. The second one was a single bedroom that was within walking distance of a subway station. The third apartment was in a quiet and very green neighborhood. Which apartment should Lucy choose? If you look closely, the first one has mold on the ceiling, and the third one looks like it has a rat infestation. So it looks like Lucy should choose apartment number two. The school's headmaster looks nervous. He gets to his office and opens the door. It was the end of the semester, and all the students were about to take their finals. When he sat at his desk, he discovered someone had been through his papers, and worse, someone had stolen his copy of the physics final. He asked his secretary to check the cameras and track the last people who had crossed the hallway in front of his office. Soon, she gathered three suspects. Jimmy from the robotics team said he passed through the hallway to get to the robotics lab that afternoon. Rachel, a new transfer student, said she got lost and ended up wandering the school's hallway looking for her next classroom. And Drake, a TikToker, said this section of the school was perfect for filming his new videos. The headmaster knew which one of them did it. Can you tell who it was? It was Rachel. The principal didn't recall having any new transfer students. It was the end of the semester. She couldn't have transferred that late in a school year. 